Thank you. Buenos dias. I hope you're all fired up. I am, and very inspired to be here alongside uh, with uh, colleagues here representing LA Unified School District and the board. Um, to all of you and to your leadership, uh, I just want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. What a welcome it is to be back home, to be back home with people that you know have it right, that care about the right priorities, about everyday working class people, and about the fact that while we talk about education, public education, and, and how many attacks are coming towards unions and everybody across the country, no one knows it more better than UTLA and the folks here in the room, but also the many people and the many students uh, and families that you represent. I am very, very proud to be able to say that I'm a product of the public schools. I, I wasn't uh, raised here in, in L.A. proper, the city, but I was born in Silver Lake, believe it or not. Um, but my family, my dad moved us out, seven, seven children that he raised, my mom and dad, both immigrants, and I was very fortunate to be able to attend uh, the Hacienda La Puente Unified School District. I went through all of my education there and my high school. But I'll tell you, the most important thing that I remember about my education was the teachers that influenced my life. Uh, Mrs. Thornberry, who was my third grade teacher from Kentucky, boy, did she have an accent. <laughs> but she taught us well our history and about Lincoln and about equal justice under the law. So those are, that's kind of the framework that I was given very early and was fascinated by, by U.S. history. Maybe that's why I was drawn to public service. But I also had a very important person in my life who helped to put that spark or, or fire up that, that what we call in Spanish, ganas, to want to do something, to want to show other people that even though society and other people say that, that uh, you're not going to achieve a whole lot because you come from another side of town and your parents are poor and gee, you know, most of you folks tend to either go this route. Well, I had a, I had a, a U.S. history teacher who ended up um, coming back to our high school, and I ran into him. And he was a, a disabled teacher, by the way. He didn't always talk about it, but he was. He was our history teacher, but he was also our PE teacher. His name was Mr. Sanchez, Bob Sanchez. Tall man, um, and he was the guy, the person, in my life who told me, Hilda, you can go to college and you can contribute to your community and your society. When I was growing up, and that was back in the uh, mid-70s, I would come home and watch television with my dad and we'd see all the things being reported on the news. Walter Cronkite, talk about Vietnam, talk about the walkouts, talk about the inequality that existed around our country. And I was drawn to that because I felt the pain. I saw it in my neighborhood. I saw it with people that I grew up with. And Mr. Sanchez said, Hilda, that anger that you have, it's, it's, it's OK to have it, but put it in an organized fashion. Channel that energy so you can make change. And the way you make change is by getting your education and then coming back and contributing to your community. That's how you make real change, Hilda because it isn't going to be enough that your voice is, you're just angry. You have to put that focused energy into a pattern so you can make change. And that stuck with me for a long time. And I thank God that Mr. Sanchez was so bold enough and cared enough about this, at that time, scrawny little kid um, that could somehow feel that somebody thought I was, that I was important enough to invest in to be able to encourage me to go to college. Yes, I was the first in my family to go to college. I'm not the oldest. I'm the third of seven, but I am the first female in the family to go. And you know what happens? Once you educate one in the family about the process of how to get through the educational system, it impacts everybody else in your family, your household. 
And I was very fortunate that my younger sisters, my siblings, all girls, by the way, have all graduated from university. And people, people ask me, how is that? How did that happen, Hilda? Well, my parents weren't rich. They were immigrants. They barely had a six, not even a sixth grade education. But I'll tell you what they did have. They had a lot of respect for, for each other and for public educators. I'll never forget that. And the fact that we were privileged to be able to get a good education here because where they came from, it was not afforded to them. You had to pay for an education in Central America, in Mexico at that time. And there was a lot of other factors. But my parents always said education is what's going to help make you successful. Mr. Sanchez said it. And, I, and a, a lot of folks that I've had the opportunity to interact with have been there when I needed them in many critical times. And I know that many of you spend days, laborious days, helping young people and their parents and the staff that work with you to help keep people motivated to understand that publication, public education is really something that is a treasure for our society and for all of us. And yes, while we're under attack across this country, I can tell you that we're going to fight back. I'm going to fight back. And I know that I'm going to have a cadre of people here in the room that are going to fight back. Because it is about hitting the core values of what we are as a society, what we are as Americans. And that is trying to make sure that everybody is treated equally, that everybody gets a fair chance. Not just because you were raised in a different zip code or your parents didn't happen to have an education, but our country, our government affords us that. But there are other influences that would like to take that away and piece it apart and somehow marginalize us and somehow keep us going after each other. We shouldn't fall into that process. And we do need to stand up for everything that we believe in, the value of education, the values that we have as Americans, that everybody should be treated equally and given a fair chance. And right now, I'm delighted to hear that the school board is taking action to help preserve early childhood education and adult education. Because it, let me tell you, there is no vast gap there. Lifelong learning happens at every instant every instance. And when I think about the young people I've seen across this country and their parents and the struggles that they go through, I look at where I come from and we have had the privilege of so many good things, but people want to take that away from us. In other parts of the country like Texas and in the South, they don't have the same means or the same leadership, progressive leadership that we do here in, in Los Angeles and in, and in California. And I can speak to that now because I've been there. But I can tell you that times are changing. And slowly, we have to make sure that we lift everybody up. LA Unified School District has a far great number of young people whose parents were not born in this country. Many of them have uh, what we call families that have marginal status. Some are not citizens, some are. We have this whole question of undocumented students. In the days when I was working in the legislature, we used to call them Leticia A students. I don't know if any of you recall that case that was litigated. But uh, because of that, I think California was way ahead about helping to protect undocumented students so they could establish residency and be able to go to college. So many of our young people, and people that I've had an opportunity to work with over my career, career have shown me that if young people have the opportunity and ability, the means, financial ability, financial aid, whatever it might be, and good role models, and I'm talking about public teachers, I'm talking about staff that work in our school systems, all of that, libra librarians, counselors, nurses, social workers, all of them have a role to play here in helping to formulate where our young people go. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll continue down that road, that we'll continue to see more funding come back as we repair our economy, that we do put funding back to fill those positions, and that we also be very selective as to who we want to lift up in terms, of, in terms of making sure that those voices that have somehow been clamped down, that we raise them, 
and we allow and we allow for those talents and skills to be exercised. That's what I think is very, very important about what we can do to make change. I know you just went through your major elections. Congratulations on the school board. I applaud you and I applaud the leadership of UTLA because it does take, in my opinion, a village. It takes a village to get everybody together and all of us working together closely. Um, I'm, I'm back home now because I um, decided that it's time to come home. And I love LA. I love Los Angeles County. And I love the fact that there's so many good progressive things going on here. And I want to be a part of that contributor. I want to make sure that I am doing what I can to help provide assistance to our families, to young lear learners, as well as older adult learners. We've got a lot of work to do, a lot of repair here that has to be done, some very thoughtful processes that have to be put in place. And I'm hoping that we can work together and that I can count on your support. I applaud you for your political, your pace leadership, because it does take money to take on outside forces that would like to somehow cripple the union, the movement, the fact that you uh, amplify the voices of our children and our families. It's very important to be a part of that. I can't underscore that. I've, I've seen it devastate states and other places around this country. And I don't think I have to name names. But all I can tell you is that we are all in this together. So I want to thank your leadership, Warren Fletcher, Mary Jan, Roberts and everybody who's been a great part of this leadership because I intend on working with you. Um, I care very deeply about our young people and especially those dreamers and their families because they're going to be here. They are not going away. There's no way that they are going to self-deport or be deported. And they will be tax-paying individuals if they're not already paying taxes. And they will help to restore funding in areas like social service and education, government. And they will be our lead entrepreneurs if we allow them to. So we've got to get to work on making sure they get the best education, but that they also have and realize all the opportunities that this great country provides for all of us. Thank you so very much for allowing me the opportunity to be here.